I always feel like anytime I'm going to talk about AEW or Tony Khan, I've got to put this disclaimer or qualifier at the beginning, because God knows if I don't, it's going to have the AEW neckbeard fanboy crew even more pissed off than they already will be anyways, because I dare say anything not 100% positive about their beloved. But, you know, AEW's been around a little over four years. I am always going to be thankful that Tony Khan, his dad shot Khan, they have the money and Tony had the passion and desire to start a little wrestling company. It's not a little wrestling company, right? It's a big wrestling company. Second biggest wrestling company in North America. Like, always be happy. It's better for fans. It's better for the talent. I don't know that it's better for the internet fan experience and just like the social media experience. I certainly don't know about that. But there are lots of positives that come from it. So I say all of that hoping that 2024 will be a better year for AEW filled with more positives and less bullshit because the reality is right now it's really hard to want to invest much effort or energy or time into AEW just because of all the drama and bullshit that's associated with watching any of their shows talking about any of their shows talking about their product at all I got, I'm at this place right now where I'm like why the fuck would I want to do that, right? It's probably been three months. No, I think it was... I think the last AEW show I watched from beginning to end was All In at Wembley. I have not watched a full Dynamite since. I haven't watched a full Collision, a Rampage. Give me a break. I'm just like most other people. They're not watching either, right? Um, but I just haven't cared very much. And I think it was one of those things where it's like with AEW, it's always fucking something. You know, it's not CM Punk being fired with cause, making me no longer be a fan. It's just yet another example, yet another thing of drama and childish behavior and lack of professionalism and bullshit that just gets stacked on the pile. It does. Now, to be fair, I'm not watching a whole lot of wrestling right now anyways, but I'm watching about zero AEW, which sucks because I wanted to be in a place where I felt like AEW was going to be that second alternative viable wrestling product for me where even if I don't like all the talents, I certainly don't like the EVPs, right? If I don't like the style of wrestling in terms of in the ring in all cases, and I certainly don't, you can also say that about WWE, a lot of that holds true, um, that it would be enough of an alternative and would give me enough, like TNA used to back in the day, where I'm like, man, that could be my my fun thing. Like, when, it, when it's awesome, it's really awesome, and I can enjoy the hell out of it. And when it's dog shit, I can also really enjoy that too. Like, not all bad is bad. Some bad is fantastic. But the type of bad that AEW is right now is not fantastic. It fucking sucks. You know, all the shit, you're it all in. However many plus thousands people, it was a lot of people there. Can we just say that? Like even all the drama talking about how many tickets are, were sold, how many people were there at the event. It's kind of like, who gives a fuck if you have to go to these levels? Not even so much as just a company, but the goddamn fans talking about this shit. Like grow up, get laid, get a life, get the fuck over it. Who gives a shit? You can look and see, it's a shit ton of people. Who gives a fuck about the semantics? But then you got people starting to lie about what the numbers mean and what the numbers actually were and like intentionally misrepresenting it. It's, it's always fucking something involving this company, whether it's directly or indirectly. From the squabbling about the number of tickets sold to then you get to All In and then you see the reports about CM Punk and Jungle Jack Perry getting into it backstage before CM Punk's match. All because Jack Perry said, it's real gra glass. What do you say? Cry me a river, bitch. Like one, and I said, believe I said it at the time, like that really pissed off CM Punk. That was a bitch behavior. And what Jungle Jack was doing was a bitch behavior too, right? 
And just another example of the talent involved, especially on the elite side of AEW, not being willing to put their feelings aside to do business. And, you know, it's, it's just shit like that, right? It's the shit like, what's going to happen with their television deal? You know, is, uh, all, all of a sudden now, are they still going to have a Warner Brothers Discovery deal long term? Or is Raw going to end up on WBD and like AEW is going to have to go somewhere else? So is there a piece of me I'm trying to pull back a little bit because I'm like, hey, like that's not necessarily the best thing right now for AEW is have some, have some turmoil about where their future network or television or streaming home is going to be, right? And you got Tony Khan talking about freaking match ratings from what was it like cage man, whoever the fuck it is, who even cares? Was it cage side or cage match? Like who even fucking cares about that? But talking about he goes there to look at and get feedback. Like, do I think that's dumb? Yeah, I don't think that's any dumber than giving a shit about Dave Meltzer's incredibly biased star rating system. But hey, like I don't even want to blast Tony Khan for that because it just gets old. And you could at least say, hey, he's looking for some type of feedback. He's not looking for it in the right place, certainly. But it's always fucking something. You've got Jericho and going after it was, was it Stephen P. New, Punk, and uh, Cornette's fucking inter attorney? Like, they're going back and forth about NDAs and bullshit. It is always fucking something. Tony Khan trying to pick battles with people. Tony Khan acting like a raging lunatic. I love his energy and and shit. And I know a lot of people always throw the booger sugar thing at him. But I'm not even going to zest energy and passion for life. I don't know what substances he does or does not do. And I don't particularly fucking care. What I do care about, though, is that he runs the company like a goddamn businessman, not like a fanboy. And too often it feels like there's a fanboy running mamuck at the wheel of a major wrestling operation. Like there's just, it's always fucking something with this company. Like, oh, what did, what does MJF say about the Israel-Palestine conflict? Admittedly, who gives a fuck what he says? Who gives a fuck what anybody says? Because nothing's going to change. We're talking about pro wrestling. Go creep into a bunch of other shit that doesn't matter. God. You got Matt Jack. Is it Matt Jackson's wife that was in charge of merchandise? And we know she was doing a shitty job. Ask anybody that went to AEW shows over the years and they have available. Like it wasn't being competently run. But talking about why she's leaving or not. Who gives a shit? Like, who gives a fuck? If there were problems in the office, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it shouldn't matter. You say, well, maybe it does. Yeah, maybe it does, but it'd just be yet another coal on the fucking fire. I just really hope that as we get into 2024, AEW can stand for a little less drama. Like, disagreements, spirited debates, things like that, I don't mind so much, right? Although, they get grading after a while, especially when you layer on all the other bullshit. But it's all this other bullshit this year. And I'm sure I'm forgetting about all types of stuff from the first seven, eight months of the year, right? Like, it's just... You know, even you go back to the beginning of the year, talk about, oh, Cody Rhodes and comparing his WWE experience now versus AEW again. Who gives a fuck, right? Like... God, and I, I personally put a lot of this blame on Tony Khan because he's the captain of the ship. He's the guy at the wheel. And in my opinion, he needs to demonstrate better leadership as a businessman behind the scenes. And he's not doing that. He might be having a great time, but you know there's a reason that some people aren't exactly sad to leave AEW because... Tony's energy can be cool and everything. And you, after a while, you're looking for direction. You're looking for structure. You're looking for competence out of your leadership. And he doesn't really jump out and leap out to you 
as somebody that's got that in abundance. So here's hoping 2024 is going to be better, but 2023, I, I thought, I thought even Tony Khan and AEW can fuck this up. Like you've got all in, you've got that massive, you know, gate, that massive attendance figure, whatever the hell you want to believe it was, right? Like that should have been an easy positive to carry you through the rest of the year. The past few months, we've been taught, feels like talking about anything else other than this. The ratings aren't moving up. They only continue to slowly head down the precipice. You know, you've got this aces and eights feeling angle shit with the devil. Who's the devil? Who gives a fuck who the devil is at this point? The devil can die. I mean, unless you're going to tell me the devil is Chris Benoit, then we got a story. Well, that would be appropriate, wouldn't it? We'll be burning in hell. But... Three plus four months ago, there's no way I thought it would have been to this point in terms of my perspective towards AEW and just how much shit has went sideways. You know, how many people are they actually drawing to the arenas? You know, all in. How much of a crutch is that becoming? Yeah, what about the other fucking shows? Like, ah, Lee, enough's enough. Can we just get back to like being able to focus on the show and making the product better? Because believe me, the reason more people aren't watching and more people like me are becoming less interested in it because it's not very good, period.